Hey folks, Quilly Teen here and welcome to Let's Play some Lone Star. Now I've had a code for this bad boy for a little bit here and I kept meaning to play it, learn it, and then do an edited video for it. And I just haven't found the time. So you know what? We're just doing it live. I have not played Lone Star yet, but I have been very eager to jump into this. So we're gonna be doing it completely blind. Um, in theory, by the time this video gets published based on the embargo date, Lone Star will be fully released on Steam. I am playing on what is theoretically the full build, but maybe an early version of the full build currently. So depending on how things go, some things may be different between now and release, but I mean, they, they refer to it as like a deck building spaceshipy kind of game which sounds great so we're gonna do it dear bounty hunter you're about to embark on the journey of bounty hunting well that's appropriate to enjoy the premium services of the bounty hunter association please enter your basic information so choose spaceship we got the shielder or another one which we'll unlock later okay i guess we'll take the shielder hp 24 feature provides four shield points that can absorb damage during battle uh unit unlock 61 of 85 treasure unlock zero of 146 so i guess the unit unlock, I'm guessing there are 61 uh, enemies that I might encounter currently, and then ultimately you can unlock up to 85. Again, I haven't played at all, so that's presumably what we unlock out of the box. Bounty Hunter Association Delegation Form. Choose Spaceship. So, I don't think it's, an, I don't think it's a literal deck builder. I think the deck building mechanics they're referring to are basically talking about these components you're putting on your ship, but I may be wrong about that. Um, it's interesting because I'm, I mean, I'm always in my head thinking about making my own games and things like that, but I am actively working on a particular game right now. Um, and it actually probably will be a spaceship with an actual deck builder mechanic for combat. And it probably will be based on what components you put in here, but more of a, more like a, the card hunter game where your equipment then adds cards to your deck. Um, all right, so we got a gentle tap device. After loading an energy, generate another energy at one point higher than the loaded one, okay. We got a basic core, a pair core. We're loading two energy at the same point, gain two strength. Another basic core, shielder, we've got that. Instructor Zero Human Bounty Hunter Association provides as much as possible to all new hunters with their instructors serving as their initial guide. So I guess this is tutorial mode. Um, tenacity, gain 10 max HP, one max fuel at the start of the game. Entry complete, please confirm that your information is accurate. The Bounty Hunter Association wishes you all the best and return as a legendary hunter. Embark. Whoosh. Ooh, the backgrounds, um, the backgrounds are kind of lo-fi and actually remind me of um, Galaxy Food Truck, Space Food Truck. I can't remember what that game is called, um, but the uh, the extra little like details of like the, the the special effects that were going on, even these little things, which make me think more of like um, uh, vapor trails from like the airplane wings wouldn't necessarily make any sense in space, but it looks great, you know? New Bounty Hunter here, welcome. Here's a quick tutorial from Bounty Hunter Association. Let's see, there's a criminal nearby, go catch him for your first reward. Are you ready for your first battle newcomer? Don't worry, I'll guide you. Wanted. Plunderer, criminal, gray stripe, danger level henchman. Gray stripe, after a high risk investment in an interstellar venture capital association, ended up with nothing and eventually took a daring risk to join the hyena gang as a space pirate. Rewards are a unit selection, some fuel, and star coin. Start battle. Oh, good music. Bow. Yeah, it's got, it's got, I mean, even from the main menu, right? We got that Western kind of vibe. Okay. Um, I have buttons. I don't know. I'll, I'll push the biggest one. Oh, is this what we're expected to, um, to take in here? Minus four shield, minus six. Oh, am I being, oh. So I'm being hit for four, two, four, but I get, maybe I, I match these up. So. When loading two energy at the same point, gain two strength. And these are just, so, okay, if I put this in, does it equal out? And then you, what, cancel? Yeah, a certain amount, but not all of it. Now, what does this mean? When loading two energy of the same point, gain two strength. Oh, you, I can put two in there. Okay, well, now the battle info comes up. The three columns of numbers in the middle represent your strength minus outcome minus enemy strength. Or your strength, the outcome, the enemy strength, right? The outcome is the absolute difference between the strength of both sides, representing the damage you're about to deal or receive. End turn. So, I guess because this is called pair cores, you can... Oh, I can see the slot indicators. Wait one, slot one. This has got two slots, and if they match, we get two points for free. That's what's going on there. 
So we're not gonna do anything here. We're gonna take one point of damage over here. I guess, okay, it looks like the damage isn't positional. We're just gonna take one hit, which is gonna be absorbed by our shields, period. And then we will, they don't have shields and we're bringing the four over here, so we'll do that. Oh, that's a cool little, yeah. See, like these, they're, the graphics are really kind of flat, but the, the special effects are just dynamite. And I'm not complaining about the graphics, right? Um, in some games, sometimes, uh, if it's a game that's heavy on information, it's important to not overload the screen with visual sugar that makes it hard to spot things. But at the same time, while the battle's actually going on, we don't care about the the, the numbers and the stats anymore, and so the sugar is appropriate. So I'm, I'm not saying this is a complaint. It is a little odd that there's like, it's almost an inconsistency in the visuals. But again, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Uh, unit and energy. The attack unit will convert energy point into strength in the same column. Uh-huh. The support unit, oh right, which in the back, produces various supportive effects. You can differentiate between the two types based on the icon color in the upper right corner of the unit. Uh-huh. Try the orange energy. You can only load energy whose color upgrades that of the slot. Outgrades that of the slot. Okay. Orange is better than blue, which is better than white. Once loaded, the energy cannot be removed. So that outgrades, right. So these are white slots here, presumably kind of grayish, whitish. So presumably anything can go in there. Here, the gentle tap device has got orange and blue slots. So you can't put white energy into it. You could presumably, so orange is the best. So only orange can go in there or orange or blue could go in here. Okay, I think I've got that. So, and it's got two slots, but it doesn't have a pair. If they're loading an energy, generate another energy one higher than loaded one. Okay. So it always gives us plus one to whatever we put in here. Oh, it actually generates a new one. Wait, so. I kind of wish I know this says you can't you can't remove it, and that's fair, but I kind of wish there was maybe a turn reset if you're trying to like figure things out. And you made a mistake because I'm thinking if I put this three in here. It'll give me a four. Yes, okay. So this by itself isn't doing anything. Like it's not being used to generate any strength. This machine here is just to, uh, meant to upgrade our card. As long as we have a card the, the correct colors, then we can put them in there. I wonder if it has to top load first or if it defaulted to that. I mean, that's definitely what we want because um, we wouldn't want the orange in there and then be stuck with a blue that we couldn't play, you know? Anyway, um, I guess here it doesn't matter. Again, position doesn't matter. All the numbers are the same. Part of me is wondering, oh, now here's an interesting situation. Yeah, I guess I'm, I can do this because I've got shield. So I'm, the three damage here is just going to be absorbed by the shield. So I'm not going to lose any real hit points. Well, I say that I didn't realize the shields didn't regenerate, but I guess it's every combat. So here I can afford to lose three. And if I do this, I do damage. I could have put it in here to cancel it out, but this way I get the plus two strength and then do more damage. But I'm now out of shield. So I got to be aware that I might be taking hull damage soon. Okay. Did he move? Does that matter? You can consume one fuel to move your ship upward or downward, one chance per turn. After each battle, a certain amount of fuel will be restored. Experienced bounty hunters will use the movement to avoid enemy strong columns. Right. So the AI, the ship moved down here as a demonstration. I'm presuming this is already being missed. And if I were to move up, I would miss this nine as well. Uh-huh. Now I'm only going to be firing out of this arc. And as I say, I could upgrade this to a three, but I already had a three, so it doesn't matter. And then nothing else can fit in there. I'm assuming it's like, it's going to boink me. Okay. It is worth noting that I could put it in a three. I didn't have to play the orange first. So yeah, I mean, the only place I'm going to be shooting is out of this bit. Because the others don't do anything. They just get blasted out into space. Okay. Well, we dodge those two nines. Oh, I guess we recenter every round. Okay, he moved up. So I'm going to do that to upgrade it to a four. And then I can dump both fours in the center to get the pair bonus and then do this. Oh, it's death. Excellent. Okay. I like the little um, disintegration effect. That looked really cool. So do I choose one of these? Okay, I get them all. 
And then I choose a unit to obtain. Oh, by unit, they mean these upgrades. Okay. High energy cube. After loading an energy, generate one orange three minus point. So whatever I put in here, I get another energy that is going to be orange. It's going to be three minus points. So I want to load the lowest possible energy in here. So if I load a one, I'll get a, a two. Three minus one equals two. Or pure white core when loading white energy gain two strength. It's an attack unit. Can I stack multiple attack units in the same column? I'm going to click it and find out. Um, obtained units need to be equipped on your ship to be brought to the next battle. The total weight of equipped units cannot exceed the ship's weight limit. Click or drag units to equip them onto your ship. Oh, there's my weight limit there. Oh, I can. So, I guess I'll center you. Vacation days. After work, you can enjoy the vacation days offered by the association. Vacation planets are marked with the different types of events you'll encounter and the days required. Usually, longer vacation events tend to be more valuable. Okay, well, they're all two and all unknown, although that to me is the shape of a unit. We have two vacation days, so we're just going to be visiting one place. You know what? I'm going to do an unknown. You arrive at a small ship repair workshop owned by the Bounty Hunter Association. However, there's only an old engineer named Hannibal working here, which is strange. According to the association's regulations, even a small facility should have at least four staff members. Uh, did he eat them? You can get your ship repaired or obtain supplies here for free, just like in other association facilities. However, the old man is slow in movement. He seems to expect you to help him out here. Uh, I don't need to repair hit points. Uh, I'm full on fuel, so I'm going to get star coins. You assist the old man fixing other merchant ships. He's delighted and gives you all the repair fees. You insist on having dinner together no matter what. Table is filled with meat dishes. Look at the little wobbly thing. Many of which you've never seen before. Nonetheless, they're all incredibly delicious. Excellent. Okay. That's a little cannibalism in a space game, right? I appreciate as well that um, when you mouse over here, there's clearly hotkeys. So E to advance. Um, wanted. Great wall. Old Chen henchman. As long as my spaceship is big enough, it, it can always hit the enemy. Old Chen loves boasts about his great wall after a few drinks, but maintaining such a large starship, spaceship has left him in debt. Start battle. The battle. Oh, yeah, look at this. Enemy ships have durability, and when you, when you show down in each column, will reduce their durability by one point. When enemy durability reaches zero, they cannot take action next turn. Reducing an enemy's durability to zero is a common strategy for bounty hunters to claim a victory. Winning a showdown in each column. Or in a column. Because I can't win in each column because there's five columns. Well, we get a... <coughs> I think we'll get a preview here. I'm just trying to decide what I want to play and in what order. I mean, I guess there's no reason not to do an upgrade. Um. Well, it, oh, maybe I should have done it differently. Maybe I should have upgraded one of these because either way it, it upgrades by one. Because the ideal might have been to put a five and a five and then put the pair in the middle. But we can still win in each column that we have access to now there you go so it is for it is each column that we win a showdown in reduces the durability that's definitely what it is and then i'm going to load a twos in here they're not going to be paired yeah so that could have gone more optimally damn that does look cool these lighting effects if i hit him one more time it's going to stun him i probably could have done it I don't, no, I couldn't have done it round one because I'm only hitting three columns, period. Um, so yeah, I can upgrade. All right, and any white energy gains two strength. It doesn't even have to be paired. Um, I probably should have put this in one of the other columns because this column's already pretty strong if I can get a pair off. That's a lot of incoming damage. Which I don't appreciate. Okay, what I'm going to do is upgrade this, put this one in the middle. Oh, yeah, and then... Mm. I was thinking, oh, then I'll only take four, but I forgot I'm getting hit in more than one place. So we are going to take some hull damage regardless. But we'll win the showdown. You'll be paralyzed for the next round. But I took hull damage that I don't think I've needed to take at this point. 
During the showdown, each victory of a column will reduce the enemy's durability by one. When the enemy's durability reaches zero, they cannot take action next turn. Yeah, okay. So they're stunned. Um, we just have to do seven damage, which we've got. But yeah, out of cure, I could do this and do that. He's already dead. Cool. And then, yeah, the rest doesn't matter. And uh, uh, so I don't... So far, there's no indicator that there's... Um, Are these all the fights I'm going to be doing? As I said, there's no indicator that there's positional damage, but maybe at some point there will be. Maybe there'll be, um, maybe there'll be units that damage things you're facing. The energy to be loaded is the last one in hand. Generate one energy. In initiate. Clicking on a unit triggers its effect and puts it on cooldown. The number represents cooldown turns. So if I click this, it will. I, it and presumably it's got a cooldown of one turn. Does that mean I can use it every turn? Oh, press to enter the detail tutorial of initiate. Oh. It's at the start of the battle. But also, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to grab this to find out how it works, although I was tempted to, to do that, but put you back here. Uh, we've got four vacation days. Still don't need fuel, although Star Cannons is tempting. Now, I don't know, like if I go here, is it gonna change the distance? I wonder if this maintains between runs. Space Casino Branch is just open and track customers offering free Star Coins and anyone enters. Okay. You accept the Star Coins and you can use them to place bets. What will you do next? Um, so this is just neutral equity here. Right, I'm at 50 50. I'm either gonna go down by five or go up by five. Pres I mean, unless this is wordly worded weirdly and on the win, I'm netting 10, so effectively gaining the 15 after the bet. But I think that's just neutral. Yeah. yeah. On vacation, why not visit the, the largest space casino? Again, you've already arranged to meet a dealer who can provide you with some assistance, even before landing the blink blinking neon lights and joy within capture your attention. And you hurriedly enter, find the dealer, and take a seat. 10% chance to gain 18 star coins or bribe the dealer. Increase in the chance by 15%. We'll just do the single bet. That's fine. Okay. Energy resource. The energy generated during battle contains two types of resources. Point energy resource, one to nine. Color energy resource, white, blue, orange. Well, has this been here this entire time? During battle, three energy is generated each turn with additional one in the first turn. You can have up to 10 energy at the same time in your hand. Oh, you don't have to play them all. Oh, and are these my odds? Or is this literally like my whole deck? I don't know. I'm thinking, no, because we can get pairs. So I'm assuming, so we're drawing three cards and they're probably randomly pulled from this. So I could get a, a two and say a three and another three. But then in addition to that, for each one of those cards, I'm assuming it rolls a quality. So each card I've get 50-50 chance of being the white quality, um, and then one six chance of being orange, and then the remaining uh, third is gonna be the blue. Cherish these lives, I prefer to taste them. Start of each turn, three energy will be generated with an extra one energy first turn. Yeah, okay, so that's the same thing. At the end of each turn, your energy will be retained. Max number of energy in your hand shall not exceed 10. The shield will take damage first and fully recover each battle. Make good use of the shield to mitigate damage. Okay, you've got a lot of stuff going on here. So this here... Yeah, it did work. I'm just curious if I'll be able to use this next turn or not. Because there's a couple of different ways to interpret a cooldown, a cooldown of one. Like, it could need an entire full unused turn. Or this this cooldown could tick down at the end of this turn or the start of next turn and be available next turn. So I'm I'm thinking with a one is that it will be available next turn, just like it was available um, on this first turn, right? Because we got, got told that um, it's not available for that many turns. So I'm assuming the cooldown burns off at the start of the turn. So this is just once per round, I get to generate a bonus energy. I am assuming. Now we got a few interesting options here. You gotta remember the fuel to move too, which seems like a good thing to do. I'm gonna just dodge this. Now I don't have to worry about putting anything at the top. 
Although, oh my, yeah, I'm only so strong here, but that was going to be the case regardless. Yeah, I really should have put the pure white core sort of on a flank. Now we can hit them hard here and they will be paralyzed next turn. Maybe the thing to do, because I'm like, I could upgrade the three to a four and then have a nice strong pair here. But I'm thinking about putting the four here just to mitigate as much damage as possible from this. And in fact, upgrade this to a five. So I only take one damage there. I'm going to do it. Then I'm going to go and put it in here just to mitigate that as much as possible. Because the center part's going to do okay pretty much regardless. What I'm going to do is I'm going to load in this pair and then I'm going to load in this white for an extra strength. And then the last one is not going to benefit from it, but I may as well. All right, you can still upgrade too. So we'll do that. And we may as well put it here just to hit as hard as possible. We're only going to take one shield damage, and we're also going to stun them. Okay. I don't have to worry about moving, because I'm clearly going to win on anything. Yep, so this is available every turn. Okay. Do that. Put the pair in here. And then it's all white energy here for a flat 16 damage. All right, he is going to fire this turn. He does hit pretty dang hard. I will give him that. I think the right move is again to try to dodge eight points of damage. And we're not going to get any kind of pairs. We may as well upgrade this as much as possible. not take any damage there and then just load this up with white cards and do that and again he's going to be paired oh thank you for letting reminding me about the click i'm just going to hold on to this i actually think this is quite useful click it again and he's parallel yeah all we got to do is, is finish him off so nothing Nothing matters anymore. We're just going to wickedly overkill it because, you know, it's fun to do. Okay, I do get a, um, I get a bit of, like, it's got a, that sort of that Slate of Spire kind of vibe, even though the mechanics are completely different. The cards are so generic, but it's what you're dumping the cards into that matters. Choose one treasure to obtain. Well, that's rare, but let's look at the common one. Whistling Arrow. Attack units, which are these. Gain two extra strength when loading. Oh, when loading one point energy. Oh, it's not one minus. Yeah, OK, that other unit I was uh, misinterpreting when I, I thought it was like three minus the points you load in. No, it was triggering on three point energy. So and this is generating one point energy. Yeah. So attack units gain two extra strength when loading one point energy. So that does seem use very useful and it's just globally working for our ship. Or at the start of your second turn, increase all energy points in your hand by two. So it's just for the one turn, but it is a hell of a number. You know what? Let's do the halftime champagne. Plus, it's rare. New treasure. Obtain treasure. Have permanent effects in this game. Collect as many treasures as possible. Uh, properly combining treasures and units is also the key to success for seasoned hunters. And then we got our ship weight limit plus one because we were at the limit. And yeah, let's go for ooh, more treasure. All right, obtain a treasure map from a senior member of the Mountie Hunter Association. When you follow the navigation to the location, you notice a fleet of hyena gang spaceships hovering in the area. You're curious as they never seem to take away the treasure, but always linger around, hindering you. So you can lose two max HP, take eight damage, or lose two fuel. I'll lose two max HP right now. I'm not even at my max, and I think we've only got one big fight to finish. Pathway is too narrow, inevitably causing collision with your spaceship, resulting permanent damage. Nevertheless, you manage to find tilted scale as a reward. A draw can also reduce the enemy's durability. Oh, that's interesting. I'm going to go for an unknown. Welcome to the space repair base. The technician greets you with a professional smile. His shiny golden tooth glistening in the sunlight. We take pride in serving bounty hunters with top-notch services. Of course, if you're feeling generous, we have more surprises for you. Restore HHP, which would be an overkill. Lose a few... No. Take four damage. Um... All right, I'll just do that, I suppose. I love the uh, the blues harp, the harmonica. 
Call for support. When needed, you can use call for support. Shop, repair, fuel, refill. Each call for support chance can only be used once per game, so use it wisely. It's a moon shadow, formidable foe known as the newbie killer. Defeat him, newbie qualified bounty hunter. I guess this is the tutorial ending. Temporary retreat. When facing unbeatable enemies, you can choose temporary retreat. You will return to the state before the battle started. Oh, so we get an undo on the fight. So he's going to whale me for 15 right down the middle. Now I'm happy that I've overkilled this area here. Well, what I think I do is I upgrade this one to a two, put the pair in here, then put the three and the one in here. And then we could save the four. Yeah, I kind of I kind of want a preview mode. Like I want to be able to put things in here and then see how the numbers work out. I could save the four or I could just hit on another angle to knock off another durability here. Um, what was it? Upgrade this to a two. So this would be four, six, 10, 14. So I take one hit over here. It sucks that I don't have, I can't get the draw for the tilted scale. Maybe there is a way and I'm just not seeing it, but. I may as well go and unload. Moving doesn't matter, so in fact, it would make things worse. Okay. Activate only in horizontal slash mode. Unable to load energy in the slot. Activate only in vertical slash mode. How did it change mode? Oh, on reaching zero durability, switch to attack mode. Huh. Oh yeah, we got this. Any reason I'd want to save versus just whacking harder right now? Well, maybe. I mean, here, I'm not taking any damage. And I'm knocking a durability off. Maybe this will give me more options for a turn later that's dangerous. Put that in there. I should have put it in there. Or maybe. Oh, hold on. No, that wasn't uh, that wasn't white energy. Okay. Okay. And if I do this, it feels like leaving options for setting up the pairs and things is the way to go. Really try to optimize around these parts here as much as possible. Especially if I'm going to be hit by multiple angles soon. And I don't know. Horizontal slash. So this one's off, and these are going to start doing things. Since I'm not being threatened, it seems like a good time to dump these ones as pairs. And even these. Just try to get maximum use out of that. Retain your better cards to counter whatever BS they're going to do 
next time. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. I hope. Um, dodging up or down would let me avoid a seven. Slow and steady wins the space race. I might want to save a fuel here since I only have two and the difference between a six and a four, it was a seven last time, I think, right? Well, I mean, I guess we might see exactly what we can avoid. Uh, I may as well take all the upgrades as that I can. Although, I mean, you know, again, maintaining pairs might prove to be useful. Maybe this is the way to do it, because one of the things if I move, it will put the nine on a weaker side that I can't defeat. And this is just about some damage mitigation. Okay. What a fun little mechanic. Okay, you've gotten back to vertical slash, which is the big number in the middle, although you're paralyzed this turn, so it doesn't come up. Um, crazy idea. Like, how much do I consider just skipping this turn? I mean, I should do the upgrades. I guess I can upgrade with the orange. I gotta remember that. Just have the maximum potential for defeating the thing in the middle. Me being named here doesn't make a difference. Doesn't even knock a shield thingy off. Although, as I say, I might prefer them in the vertical mode, but taking getting the, these paralysis turns as often as possible is very valuable. So I'm still, I think I'm going to want to break the durability as much as possible, regardless. I say, if my friend, um, if my friend Demonac is watching this video, I think he's going to have a lot of crazy ideas about things. Um, I'm wondering about putting the two fives in the middle. So just upgrading this three and then maybe holding on to it. Do this just enough to not take damage, pop a durability, keep them stun locked. Tough opponent. That'll last 10 turns. I got an achievement, but I'm just just taking her easy, you know? I might want to save an orange for next turn to make sure I can feed one in there. And then the same sort of five. We'll just burn off some of these lower tier cards. Take no damage. Just keep whittling away. Now, once he gets low, I can go and dump some some higher damage onto the uh, side cores. I'm actually I was complaining earlier about putting this pure white core in the middle. Now I'm so happy because it's making this fight so much easier and more manageable than I think it uh, might have been otherwise. Oh, I should have saved the blue. I had a I had a white number three here. Thing. We're not at lethal range yet. So we'll just end that. Oh, 
Oh, maybe I should have gotten the five for that. That's no, fine. Still not quite lethal. Okay, and turn. Broke that. You're paralyzed, and we might have it now. Run this. Um, that one. There, there, there. Yeah, I mean, overkill. No such thing as too much overkill. Adversary, adversity is the bouquet of my life? Something like that. Okay, we're gonna do this, this, this. Um, Vanguard Metal, Dream Battle first. The first attack unit that loads energy in the hand gains two power. Every three turns generate an extra energy. I don't know, these are both good. I'll take the extra energy. And woo, legendary, multi-cleaver. When the unit behind loads a white energy, it loads the identical energy one more time. Um, we're not set up to take advantage of that. We'd have to put this here and then get something that we can put in there that we'd load white energy into. But that sounds amazing and we're maybe gonna wanna leave room in our ship designs going forward. Uh, arc amplifier, tri power. Okay, it does have three slots. The attack unit in front gains five power. After loading a total of three energy into units, the effect is triggered. The loading progress will be retained until trigger. Oh, you can do it over time. So the actual power of this doesn't matter. So ideally it's like dump a, a level one orange, blue, white. At least one entry has been loaded into unit power will provide additional strength for this unit. Okay. Hey, what? I'm going to do this. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, no, okay. I thought it got to choose the direction, but no, it's just telling me about direction effects. So we'll go and put it in here. So it's going to be a very cool little effect. Six vacation days. Shop. I got money. Let's go to the shop. The first item you buy is free. Gain one orange energy resource and remove one white orange. Oh, deck manipulation. nearby overclock when loading energy onto this unit if the energy points is greater than the overclock threshold its effect is triggered so i'd have to load or greater or equal to so i'd have to load four or more energy into this to gain a power the power persists for the entire battle oh oh the power persists for the entire battle. Oh, the entire battle, you say? Guys, guys, it, it persists for the entire battle. I still think we're going to take the orange star here. Because we can use the orange energy for things. And I'm assuming that was probably... Oh, actually, did we tell the cost? Because it was just saying free everywhere, right? Issue two, increase all white energy in hand by three. See, that's kind of sick. And this was... Hold on. Oh, this is an attack unit. Okay, so it attacks on its own, and then in addition to that, we can keep boosting its power all the time. Now this is a treasure, so it doesn't even use up a slot. I mean, I've got tons of money. This is all nearby. This would be better like maybe in the middle or something like that. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna put the... Um... That's a support unit. When loading an energy, generate another energy one point lower than the loaded one, and the attack unit behind gains two strength. Well, I... Hmm. I could put the high voltage amplification core in the bottom left here, and then put this attenuating unit in front of it. Because then as I load stuff into here, it'll boost this. But this is kind of going to boost itself. I think I kind of want the growth device. I mean, I should do some math or something, but... Wait, wait, what? Oh, no, my weight limit. Oh, no, I forgot about the weight limit being a thing. Shoot. All right. So, yeah, attack energy, attack units get two extra strength when loading one point energy. 
and then when we do the durability it generates an energy and then i've got this thing sitting around doing nothing i forgot about the weight limit all right after making purchases you can th you thank the shopkeeper for generosity well you can't get rid of the feeling something seems off is he also a cannibal ancient and man and planet you discover a relic of Undeptus Mechanian, an electronic cylinder. It's said that the believers who once hesitated about whether to modify themselves and their ship would seek answers to the relic of Father Henderson. We can upgrade the pair core. Ah, okay. So from two bonus strength to four bonus strength. So again, getting sort of, I mean, yeah, monster train as well, but I slay the spire kind of you vibes, even though like mechanically so much is different and yet it's hitting some of the same notes, right? Upgrade the weak energy source. Oh, this will generate one point white. That's actually perfect because the orange one point energy can always be loaded into this. This will be a great way to ensure that the arc amplifier is getting constantly fed. Or the gentle tap device uh, could now be used to upgrade the white card. No, no, we're going to do the weak energy source. Try and draw the number two straw, but the dense wiring is somewhat ineligible. Ill illegible. Upon careful examination, it seems a method of binary treatment. Miraculously, your tree's units are immediately upgraded. Okay. Why does this have a one, the one nut, like, which is support unit, and this is two. This also has two. Was it two before I upgraded it? And these are single orange pips. I don't know. Director, as a one-star hunter, you have claimed the bounties for the following criminals. Association has promoted you to a two-star hunter. I had noticed, I think it was like, was it saying four of 12 over here? Yeah, okay. So now we're in a new galaxy. So in this, you know, and again, maybe when you play the campaign, maybe you unlock more stuff or whatever. Right now it looks like it's four combats per galaxy and then it'll go up. So. Upgrade preview. If you want to know the upgraded effects of a unit, you can expand the upgrade preview box on the right side. Okay, so that is the upgrade indicator. Yep. So this this one here I got was already upgraded. Oh yeah, down at the bottom right, how do I expand it though? I'm sorry. Can I move these? Oh, well, for crying out loud. Okay, see, I missed that in the tutorial. Oh, it is expanded already, but. Okay, then it gives me the, the info. All right, I see it now. It wasn't getting me info on these because they're already upgraded. But, oh, this basic core could be upgraded to have two slots in it, for example. Oh, these can be moved around. Oh, I, I, hold on. I bet that means I can, oh my God, I wonder if I can sell these. Now, do I want it here or do I want this getting boosted by the arc amplifier? I know this theoretically is going to get strong enough as is and it can fit two cards in it. I think what we want to do is upgrade this weaker one. Although if, if I can actually get an upgrade on this to allow it to have two slots while getting the power boost, that's going to be really nice. Anyway, this video is 43 minutes long. We'll put a cut in here. What we're going to do is we're going to finish this run, but I'll I'll continue it in the next video. Hey, if you are new to the channel, of course, subscribe so you don't miss it. And in general, hitting that like button and leaving a comment is really good for the YouTube algorithm and is much appreciated. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.